Your memory makes you a human more capable. The same applies for AI agents. If they can remember things, they can do more things. So let's talk about how you can add memory to your voice flow agent. First up is VF memory. This is the simplest way to add memory to your agent. The VF memory variable automatically saves the last 10 messages from your conversation. That is 10 messages total, including messages from the user and messages from your agent. Let's try using VF memory in a prompt now. We're gonna build a super simple agent. The agent is gonna ask for some input. It's gonna loop back around, ask for some more input, loop back around, ask for some more input, and then finally, it's gonna summarize everything that the user just said using a prompt step and VF memory. So, first of all, we're gonna add a message step. And we're just gonna say, tell me something cool. We'll then, of course, connect this up to the start step so that this runs when our agent starts. And we'll use the capture step to listen to what the user says. We'll capture their entire reply as well. Okay, next up, we're gonna need a counter because we wanna collect three different bits of information. So we're gonna add a set step to our canvas. We're gonna say logic and set. So we've already captured one piece of data here. Let's connect it up and we'll set a new variable. So we'll press plus, we'll use value or expression, create a new variable and we'll just call it counter. And we'll just say, the number of messages collected from the user as our description. Then we'll hit create variable. Oh, actually, there's one final thing we should do. When you're dealing with this kind of counter, you'll probably want to set a default value too. So we'll edit this back in and we'll add a zero. Much better. Okay, so rather than setting this to a value, we've already got a default value, which is zero. We're going to set it to an expression. And we're going to write a tiny bit of code here, but don't worry if you're not a developer. I'm going to walk you through what we're actually doing. So first of all, we're going to say parse and then capital I N T, no space. We're going to open up our brackets and we're going to say counter. Then we're going to after that bracket, say plus one. All this does is convert that zero into a number currently stored as text and adds one to it. So it makes it from zero to one. Okay, now we'll do a tiny bit of logic. So let's go and use a condition. We'll connect this up and we'll set this to business logic. Let's add a path using the condition builder. And we'll say if counter is free, then we'll do something. Otherwise we'll do something else. And that's something else is just going to be looping background to the very start of here. And if you see that happen, it just means you didn't quite connect it up properly, like I just did. And if this line looks a bit weird, by the way, you can move lines around manually. So you can make it look a little bit more pretty and intuitive. This gets really important when you're building more complex flows. Okay, we just did quite a lot quite quickly there. So let's just test our agent out really quickly so you can understand what we just did. I'm going to hit the run button and I'm going to hit run test. My agent is going to say, tell me something cool. And something cool that you should know about me is I like cake. It's going to ask me for something else cool because that zero is just set to one on our counter. So something else cool is that hamsters are pretty cool. And of course, one more cool thing. That's I'm pretty tired today. Are you pretty tired today? Let us know in the comments down below. So there we go. It's going to say path not connected because that counter was set to free. And we haven't set that bit of our flow up yet. So let's do that now. We're going to make a summarizer using the prompt step. So we'll go back. We're going to add a prompt step. So we're going to say talk prompt. And we'll connect this up. We'll create a new prompt. There's a bunch of starter templates down here, but we're just going to write our own real quick. We'll call it super simple summarizer. I love alliteration. And our system prompt is going to be, you are a summary agent. Your job is to summarize a conversation in a single sentence. Okay. So again, if you're building something for real, you're going to want a much more complex system prompt than that, probably. We can then add in our conversation history here, just by pressing add and then conversation history. 
And it really is that simple. So now I'd also recommend setting a user input here just to be safe. This is for your prompt. So you can then say summarize the above conversation. Perfect. All right, so now we can close out of this and we have just used the F memory. That is what is being used behind the scenes when we just added our conversation history. So let me just show you this. If I now hit run and then hit run test, tell me something cool, hamsters are cool, tell me something cool again, sharks are pretty cool, and one other thing that is cool is Toronto. I like it here in Toronto. And our agent is gonna summarize it, and it's gonna say a brief random exchange about various topics, including hamsters, sharks, and Toronto. With no substantial discussion taking place. It's a bit savage, isn't it? Okay, so that is how we can use message history. Just to kind of prove behind the scenes what that VF memory variable looks like, let me just take out this summarizer. Let me just add a message step. And instead, I'll just use the VF memory variable directly, just so you can see it. So we'll just connect this up. And this time around, rather than summarizing it, it's just going to show you the history. So let's hit run, run again. I'm gonna say the same thing. Hamsters are still pretty cool. Sharks are also still pretty cool. And Toronto is indeed still pretty cool. And there we go. That is our VF memory variable. And you can see here, there's assistant and user, and assistant and user, and it's our transcript, up to the last 10 messages total. So that's how we get the last 10 messages in a conversation. However, sometimes you might wanna build something a bit more complex so you can do some clever logic. For example, you might only want to save a certain part of a conversation or exclude certain parts. For example, if you ask security questions, that's when the last utterance and last response variables come into play. If you've used the capture set before, and you just did, last utterance should sound pretty familiar. It contains the last message that is said by the user. For example, if an agent asks me, hey, how are you? And I reply with, eh, I'm kind of mid. Last utterance will be set to, eh, I'm kind of mid. In the same example, last response would be set to, hey, how are you? That's because last response contains our agent's last message. All right, so let's reconnect our prompt and modify it so it only summarizes the last interaction our user had with our agent. All right, so let's get rid of that message step which we added, which just said the history, and let's reconnect our prompt step. Then let's edit our prompt. And instead of passing in the entire conversation history using VF memory, we're gonna add a message pair. And you can manually build message pairs, but in this case, I'm just gonna pass in last response, which is the last thing our agent said, and last utterance, which is the last thing our user said. And of course, instead of the above conversation, it's gonna be the below conversation because it's down here. Awesome. Now let's try running our agent. And that's the only thing I just changed, but it's gonna work a bit differently. So tell me something cool. Puppies are fluffy. What else is pretty cool? Well, chocolate tastes amazing. And finally, one other cool thing is maple syrup belongs on every single food. That is true. If you disagree, you're wrong. And our summary is a passionate food enthusiast declares their love for maple syrup as a universal condiment. That is correct. And I fully agree with that. But you see there? Puppies weren't mentioned and neither were chocolate. We only passed in the last two messages, our agent's last message and our user's last message. If you're a developer, you can use the last utterance and last response variables to build custom memory functions. If you'd like to learn how to do that, click right here to check out our docs. Developers can also use our API to inject additional information into the agent's memory, such as the pages someone visited on a website. So now your agent has memory and it can take into account previous conversations from replying to users or interacting with AI. Want to learn another superpower? Functions that let you add custom code to your agent? Well, you're in luck. We got you.